Well, all right, man. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you guys again. <laughs> so let's start, Sanjay. Why don't you give us background on sort of you guys, your background, where all of this started, and then I know there's been some name changes and things you might want to touch on. Give everybody a little intro on, on what's going on. Sure. No, appreciate the time, guys. I'm Sanjay Baskar, I'm uh, VP Business Development Partnerships over at Street Shares. Atlas is our platform, which is what we kind of run all our products under. You know, just a, a quick 10,000 foot view. Our company started almost eight years ago, a little over eight years ago, as a direct lender, really in the veteran military space. Our co-founders are military veterans and decided they wanted to build a better business loan in that community. So a lot of veterans start businesses, their families own businesses. And they didn't like what they saw that was out there in terms of, of lending opportunities. A lot of the high rate payday type of lenders were out there taking advantage and said, how do we do it better, faster, more efficient? Full disclosure, how do you how do you kind of put a rate out there so that you know you see these rates and terms from other companies? They don't know what they're getting. We yeah. started from day one showing business owners APR. What a concept. This is what you're paying for your loan. And uh, from there, it really developed. I came on the company uh, when they were about two years old, two and a half years old, and uh, just started helping develop folks that were looking for lending. And from there, we started hearing from banks and, and other folks and, and other FI saying, you guys look like a pretty neat solution. And some of my customers have worked with you. Can we send business your way if we can't work with them? And that's where our partnership started with, with FIs. And it really evolved in the community lending community banking space. So they were like, you know, that's kind of neat. Could I maybe put a link here where we could start using these kinds of loans in an outsourced way? And as we started building from there, uh, then we got a lot of requests from folks that said, can I balance sheet these loans? How do I do that? And that's where the, the lending business lending as a service really kind of started and launched. And now it's become a full SaaS platform where folks are just saying, you've built the technology. If I can underlay my credit criteria and have a digital loan experience, I want to be able to offer that to my business owners. You know, fast forward into pandemic, PPP started, we retooled our platform to help with PPP loans, uh, you know, more than quadrupled our client base, uh, worked with over 200 institutions over the years here delivering different solutions. So it's been exciting to see the evolution and the efficiency has been huge. You guys are so like community bank centric, you know, yeah. with small yeah. business. I think every community banker out there knows that we got to win on small business. Right. And I think every community banker also knows there's not a ton of products that are very community bank focused, right. To, yeah. to small yeah. businesses. And so uh, I think you guys are such a cool fit. And I know from the roundup, you guys are always a hit there. Everybody loves <laughs> part of that's you, hey, man. Just, hey, just being hey, a fun guy. Right? Love the guy. Yeah. Right, come on. <laughs> Everybody I talk to, it's like, you know, they're going to go back to 2018 yeah. prior. And it's like, no, I didn't know them. They didn't know me. I, nobody knew who they were now. Every banker in the world knows yes, who you are. Yes. You no, we appreciate that. I, you know, you guys a part of our story. We love talking to you. And, and obviously, I love Roundup. I mean, you know, even a funny story is Bank from Roundup that we just met there in October. They're already on the platform yes. and they're about to go live. I mean, think about that timeline from introduction to being live in less than four months. I mean, that's crazy to think about, yeah. but they just loved it. They said, this is a product community focused that we can use and, and deliver. And to me, that's what it's all about. It's about what's that right solution that makes sense, but can be deployed quickly too. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to, again, we talked before, but I don't want to take on a project. that's going to be a year, 18 months, just to realize it doesn't really do those things that I need. Um, so how do I solve for it? I think part of that's the challenge. What am I trying to solve for? That's and and if, if I've got a specific challenge, whether it's creating that frictionless business lending experience account, open, whatever it is that you're looking for that makes you more efficient at the community bank, figure out what that is, identify companies that can help you and, and go after it. Mm -hmm. Make it sound easy. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's like the easy button. You got to push the easy button. When easy you're button, man. There you go. <laughs> Something we've talked about a lot, uh, me and Sanjay and Tanner is, uh, you know, Everybody's kind of tired of getting yelled at. You know, we got to do something. If you don't act now, you're not going to. And it's like, so what exactly would you have me do? And everybody, crickets. Right. You know, or even worse, I'll tell you what to do. And they come up with some absolute bullshit. Right. That's not going to work. They don't know what they're talking about. And it's great misinformation to sell their product. It's great buzzwords, though. Right. You know, excellent word salad. Yeah. And so we, we end up in this position of 
the very few people that seem to understand technology and banking. And integration, interoperability, APIs, partnerships. Well, when you talk about how I said hello to a guy and four months later he's running my product, obviously you got your shit together there. So that's off to you. That's pretty Yeah, good. yeah. No, and, and that's a great point that you bring up. You know, I was at the um, event here this week at the AOBA and good event. Obviously, more on, on people are looking for mergers, but I don't think community banks need to do that. I think there's, you know, they had a lot of fintechs there that were partners to banks, folks like us that have bankers on staff that say, how do we build you a product that's going to help you? You don't need to be acquired or, or acquire. You could acquire if you want to go and grow, but that's not necessarily what you have to do if you can create efficiencies within your business. Mm-hmm. We, I talked to a banker there and, and one of the things I asked was, what did you get out of this? What was the, some of the things that you learned here? And he said, what I've really learned is that we're way behind in our fintech partnerships. We're not talking to enough people to make ourselves more efficient. We're not going down that path. And even another banker commented at lunch one day, they're like, you know, it used to be lawyers taking us out to lunch at these events. Now it's fintechs because they've become such an important part of what we do. And if you're a community bank in Fredericksburg, Texas, are you going to go hire technologists to build solutions? No, you don't have the budget or time for that stuff. But if you know you want to fix things, there's a lot of good solutions out there that can help you. That's right. You bet. Well, and, and that's kind of what we do with Bankers Up and Bankers with the Roundup, yep. the thing that we're about. We've got all the data. We've got all the technology. We understand how everything fits together. And it's to answer those questions. What should we do, right? So it's not just you need to do something. It's actual well, let's get down to the, the strategy part, man, where it gets cool, right? You're trying to grow your small business. You're trying to, and you know, and I've heard a lot of people kind of catch on to this idea of, you know, hit a home run uh, with PPP and now it's time for the bankers to follow up. Man, you don't need to hit another home run. You just got to get on base. Yep. And uh, so to yep. get these wins that the bankers need, well, it's and, these little implementations that we're talking about. Like community banks won business solution. big time with small business, right? I've talked to a ton of community bankers that are, look, we've, everybody watching has heard the story of, I'm a business owner. I call up the big, one of the big four. It turns into a mess and I go find a community bank, right? And I'm hearing that or from fintech. bankers like crazy uh, that have benefited off of that. And so there was a little bit of a shot in the arm coming out of PPP, yep. I think in terms of small businesses. And I think to your point, now you got to follow up with another hit, you know? Well, yeah. Then- yeah. No, you, you really touch on something important there. So, you know, th- that is, I've talked to so many bankers that even used us during PPP and said, I maybe gained a hundred or more new relationships. And, and it might, in a normal cycle, it might take me three years to get a hundred new business relationships. Oh, and I did that in weeks, literally weeks. And so how do you, what do you do with them now? I mean, they're there, maybe they've opened an account. Start with a second date. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're not necessarily a, a sticky client yet. They haven't done enough with you. And so one of the things that, that our folks have said is, hey, can you load my PPP customers in? Because those are the first ones when, I'm, when I got my business lending piece. Those are the first set of people I'm going to say, hey, do you need another loan? Here you go. Remember that nice experience you had applying electronically? You can do that now for your regular loan as well. So, and it's not a, you know, either or, which is something I think a lot of people misunderstand fundamentally. It's yep. augmentation, right? We're going to make it better. Not everybody wants to do it this way or wants to do it that way. Like you said a minute ago, uh, we didn't need branches. They wouldn't be opening the damn thing back up again, right? So there's obviously a, a need for all of these things, not just one. Uh, something I, I kind of made some notes here to talk to you about was, you know, the winners, the losers, the lions, you know, uh, we're watching so many things transpire with, you know, whether it's a firm, Klarna, buy now, pay later, CFPB. Big or, time, you know, uh, and then we've also yeah. now got PayPal taking a, you know, 25% hit. You got Meta, Facebook taking a big hit. Yep. And who are the people that are winning? Well, you won't believe this, but it's MasterCard, it's Visa, it's community banks back to small business lending. And it all bases around the fact that, you know, we have a, a phase one of pre-pandemic, we have pandemic, and then we have what we're now looking at in the future as post-pandemic. Sunshine, and, rainbows, oh, bunny yeah. rabbits. Convertible, <laughs> you your, your girlfriend over here, yes, a convertible, yes. I mean, just flying out, yeah. boy, everybody's got a big smile yes. again. As we move into this back to work, back to travel, back to normal situation, community banks have this uniquely cool moment in time as they open their banks back up they employ solutions like atlas 
let's talk about some of the things that you guys do. So I, I've took some notes here. Uh, first off, I want to ask you if Mark Rockefeller, is he one of the Rockefellers? Uh, he is a, a relative, a distant relative. Yes, sir. He is. See, that's my life, man. Yeah, it's man. like, I'm so far down the list, you know, <laughs> I'm related to the oh, yeah, come you guys on. the Mayo Clinic. I'm yeah. like, well, hey, no. I'm almost, I can put yeah. a bandaid on a pole. <laughs> Okay, mm-hmm. so there were some things I've jotted down here about, you know, analytics, automated decision making. And then there was another one that got me really, I put a capital letters here. Decision is a big one. Business owner hub. Yep. Tell me about that. That sounds so cool. It is. So, you know, if, if you think about the life of a small business commercial loan, typically there's a process where the bank has to identify who can, who should apply it whether it's word of mouth, their business development officers, whoever is talking to their business owners, how do I hear about my bank wanting to give me a a small business loan? And then you have the application piece, which is so important, but so critical. But today, if you would go on a community bank's website, for the most part, it says, call us. Well, if I'm a small business owner and on Saturday, my oven breaks and I go to my community bank, it says, call me. Like, well, so do I have to close until Monday before somebody thinks about getting back to me on getting a loan to get this fixed? And so how do you, how do you reach that? Per- how do you reach them on their time? Like that's, that's kind of the process. So, you know, you have that application piece, then you have the underwriting decisioning, but the owner hub is really around that application. If I can go in there quickly and put in my information, attach the documents you're going to need to review this loan, I can then go back in later on. I can check for an approval. I can see if you need more documents from me. So I got everything at my fingertips now because, again, traditionally, if they've given you the stuff, you got to call them now or email and say, well, I'm still missing X, Y, Z. You have to bring it by the branch. That's not always convenient anymore. And and our thought process, we don't want to take away your branch. We don't want to take away your community. We think that's super important. It's why you're there. It's why you're a community bank. If they want to come in and talk to you, they can. But this is just augments that. It gives them that that optionality. Do I want to come in or do I want to do this online and know that I got approved quickly and I can still call my banker if I'm if I need a conversation. And I have the availability to go do that. This is an excellent message for the bankers out there that you know their company, Atlas Platforms, you know, Street Shares. Uh, if you haven't connected the dots, it's the same place. But uh <laughs> yeah, it's Street Shares. Atlas is the product within Street Shares. So. The Sanjay. This, that guy. <laughs> so, hey, man, uh, as these bankers kind of look at this and say, look, I'm trying to augment a little bit here or trying to augment a little bit there. It's not rip and replace, guys. So we're not trying to tell you you need to stop doing business lending in the traditional way you've done it. We're just saying there's faster, better, easier ways that augment this plus or you can rip and replace, but not moving this direction and looking at some of the vendors. And really what our job is here is trying to showcase some of these folks like you. you. So but pick up the phone and call. There's them. there's been a heck of a rubber band <laughs> effect, right? That I think has gone on um, and a polarization. So if you think about during the pandemic, PPP, definitely the the slingshot one direction, right? And it was screaming fintech. Oh my yeah. goodness, right? Everything digital. I think now to some of your points, right? We're starting to see the repercussions of that. I think you look at some of the stats out there. The average American is X percent. More people have engaged with fintechs, and a lot of that has brought problems. There's some trial and error there in a lot of cases, right? And so there's there's some folks, especially with your challenger guys, right? The Chimes and others that have had not such a great experience. Think about Coinbase and some of the things, right? There's been some problems and some things that people aren't thrilled. When there's only a 1-800 number and I can't get anybody on the phone and there's not a physical location, all right, when you come back the other way, and you look at community banks really succeeding with small businesses through PPP, right? Now, what is that middle ground where we can use the technology to make the people go further? I think that is the coolest part. And how do we inject that exactly where it needs to be? It's the small business piece. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a, a critical part to community bank, commercial, small business, especially. And, and with the system we do is, like I mentioned, you have the application, the owner hub. You also have the decisioning. Well, all of that is is overlaid with the bank's criteria. So even in the application, if there's an industry you're not going to find, you put that in as kind of a stopper in the process because nobody wants to go through a process just to realize you're never going to be able to fund me anyway. So you customize that front end and then you put your credit criteria into the decisioning. 
talked about that auto decisioning. And yeah. I don't really like the word auto decisioning because I think sometimes Mike's like, I don't want a black box. <laughs> you have final say over every loan that goes out. It, it gives you a recommendation if they qualify, but you still have the ability to edit, change the decision, make any changes before it just goes out. It's not a full automation, but it's automated enough where you could take a few minutes on that file and say, yep, this looks good. I'm going to push this back into the owner hub as an offer. And they might log in tomorrow. They might apply now, log in tomorrow and see, I've already been approved at the bank. So is this a true statement that the bankers can control some of that decisioning process and the parameters? So putting their bank policies built in? Absolutely. They put in their credit parameters, what they're looking for. So when it's run against our decisioning model, which was built really through our direct lending, and we've done thousands of loans through that, that process, it was really built that way. So it's configurable to what the bank is looking for. There's certain metrics and you can tweak it. You know, it's not a fire it and forget it. So if a bank says, you know what, this last quarter, we didn't see enough applications or we saw too many, we can either scale down, scale up, we can lower or move our, our credit criteria up or down. So we can turn that, that faucet on either more or less, depending on what we're looking to do. If you're getting over concentrated in an industry, you can pull that back as well. So yeah. you've got a lot of, that's where the analytics comes in. What industries are you lending to? Where are the loans coming from? So there's a lot of applications that can be Perfect. born out of that. Yeah. Okay. Every banker in the world knows this one, right? So I'll use Austin, Texas. Um, I'm kind of familiar with that one. <laughs> in a few miles south, there's a little town called Buda. It used to just be a flashing light. Out west of town, you got Dripping Springs. That was a yellow flashing light. These communities now are so huge. It's unbelievable. So back in the day, this would have been ag loan country, and now it's full-blown commercial. So as these dynamics move and everybody coming out of PPP, all of a sudden it's like, come back to the office. And they're like, ah, no thanks. All right, <laughs> I'm going to move to Western Oklahoma or something, right? Yeah. Wherever these people want to go, they can work from home. This fundamentally changes everything going forward. And so when we have this automation process and we have these things in here, and I love this idea of an analytical machine that's looking at where your applications, I mean, what's the trend going on in your own marketplace? You might have missed it. Because uh, there's a lot of things that are set and forget it, to your point. They're right. very static. I think about cards and payments, guys. You have so much risk there that you're really ramping up those parameters so that you don't get crushed. And then if you're too lax, right, you got too much incoming, then you're getting frauded out, right? But what ends up happening is you come up and you sit down with this bank wide concept and let's really get straight <laughs> think about this and we got our perfect balance and then you set it and you come in 15 years later and it's like nobody at the bank was even here when we came up with those parameters right, right? because it's so stringent so the ability to be able to shift and move based on need that's a lot of what we're seeing with well, some of these cool new arenas you know, man in the like old it. days a gas station would put you know dollar 25 a gallon out front you know and then we'd have our cd rates at the bank you know x percent right you, you can't sit back and go, well, I heard Mary at the other bank, they're making a lot of commercial loans all of a sudden, and we're still doing ag loans. That's a piss poor way to run a bank. Yeah. Yeah. So when you've got yeah. some analytic capability built into a business lending platform, do you see the significance of where this goes? Most importantly, this is very, very important. You're never going to hear the FinTech Cowboys try to tell a banker to go out and be a test dummy. Uh, we want to talk to companies and bring you companies that are, I don't like even, I don't even like the word vetted. Um, <laughs> I like the word established. And when okay. you went out there and you owned it in PPP, and then you've quadrupled your business since then, hey, this is not a test dummy. No. And this is a bank built product. So these are bankers that built this. And, and maybe I don't know how much people put integrity behind being a veteran. I do. And they're veterans. They're also bankers. They understand this game and they're here to help. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you know, if I can say one thing, I, I've talked to a lot of folks that say I've got, you know, I'm looking at these large solutions, big LOS, it does a little bit of everything, maybe nothing really well. Uh, we look at, we're a small business focus and we put our money where our mouth is. We we did this for many years as a direct lender. So we understand that customer, but having bankers on staff, one of our co-founders is, is a former banker that helped build this. They, we, we get those pain points and we know that we have to be compliant. We have to be regulatory compliant for you. If you get audits or exams, you need to be able to show this is what we're using. This is a, a vendor that actually thinks about compliance and regulatory issues. This is not just somebody that decided to write lending software. 
You know what's no, funny, they, you guys? This sounds like a damn commercial for Atlas. And uh, that's right. I don't want it to be that. <laughs> but you guys do such a great job at it. It's hard not to turn this into a conversation like that. When really what we're talking about is, you know, again, you, you hit your home run with PPP. It's time to come in with a round two. Just let's get on base, lay a butt down here. Maybe hit a double would be cool. Get us in scoring position. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's really what we're trying to do, whether it's your company or other companies like that. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. I mean, you, you bring it. I don't care what the solution is. I tell community bankers, find something, mm-hmm. find your efficiencies, find solutions that make sense for you. What works? What are you trying to accomplish? Your, I, your customers are not going to fault you for it as much as they love you. If they can work with you efficiently, you know, I, I had one of my banks to talk to. They said, well, we really like to see the customer before closing. I said, great. So if you can get them to apply you can get them a decision in 24 hours and you say, you know what, your, your paperwork's ready. Come in the branch and sign it. They're not going to get mad at you for that conversation. They'll come by. They'll be like, sure. What time do you want me there? All I got to do is sign. You've approved me. So whether it's in business lending, account opening, credit card, whatever, the mortgage, whatever it is that you're looking at, find those efficiencies because the world is changing. As you guys know, I mean, even now service-based businesses are growing and, and you just touched on they They don't have physical locations a lot of times. Mm-hmm. They operate from wherever. And if it's a service-based business, I, a lot of times I've talked to people like, I'd love to keep my community bank with me, but I can't get the technology that I want from them. Well, Tanner, and that's hard. really good a minute ago when you were talking about, you know, okay, when we're talking with this to each other, this is our little code stuff. He calls it a throat to choke, right? So, yeah. you know, I, I got kind of ripped off on one of the... the, the Coinbase. Coin, okay. Coinbase. I'm still waiting on my money and I'll never get it. That said, call the 800 number and it's your account is frozen. It can't even talk on this phone. Okay. I can't get an email that isn't an automated response. There's nowhere to go. And anybody that wants to just say, that's the future. Bullshit. Hey, and I'm not saying it's not, but it, it's feeling like a hundred year future. If you watch, <laughs> right. If you watch yeah, these, yeah. these fully digital platforms, I think that the average American has felt some pain in the last well, year or two through the, the pandemic. The point is, I want to I want to be able, I don't even need to do it. I just need the peace of mind to know I, I can drive down there. You could give me a high school lobby. kid with an intern. I got 57 miles away, right? Yeah. Like yeah. It, it could be nothing, but okay. I need to go somewhere and yell at somebody. Okay, so right? here's the deal. I need to know that that location exists. I am going to give a prediction. If y'all ready? Okay. I don't do this very often. So can we get a drum roll? I'm I'm actually terrified. Okay. (laughs) If you were to put FinTech into your bank, if you were to adopt, or let's say the government sets up regulations and we can adopt crypto and things like that into your bank and you've got branches and you're touching the public, these things are going to fly. Okay. At first, we have to order the Slurpee online and then the Slurpee comes to me and it tasted terrible, but eventually I'm still going to keep buying Slurpees because everybody tells me that's cool. But when you got a Slurpee machine on the corner, I'm going to go there. And that's mm-hmm. really what we're talking about here. This mechanism of branches and community banks that span across the country, guys, do so not powerful. sell your bank. It's the most valuable thing there is, is your charter. It's hard as it hell. Matters. It matters a lot. Yep. Yes. Super hard to get one. Fantastic opportunities are coming your way. Don't put your head in the sand and say, I don't know, fintech, fintech. And if you want to say Atlas is a fintech, that's what we see these things as. This is employing, and I'm going to say it for the last hundredth time, Jamie Dimon doesn't want you to do this. Right. Because <laughs> you guys have maneuverability, he doesn't. And, yeah. and I don't care who says how many billions of dollars they put into it. If they're beating everybody's ass so bad, why are they putting that much money into it? <laughs> because they're scared to yeah. death of community banks. Yeah. And community yeah. banks get empowered with people like Atlas and game over. Agree. Yeah, that, that's a that's a great point. I mean, you know, like I said, yeah. and again, it sh- it shouldn't be scary. You know, you can ask questions of your fintechs. Are you SOC two compliant? What what do you do on the regulars? I mean, you, what, can you provide me a, a detailed diligence package? Those are questions you should ask. And as a community yeah. bank, you, you have the right to ask that. And if that can't be produced, move on. Yep. And that's okay because then you're not picking the right partners. But really? at the end of the day, it shouldn't be a scary word for you to say, how do I do things and get more efficient? That's right. And and there's ways, you know, whether it's through us or through others or however, 
again, back to being a, you know, a test dummy or crash dummy or a, you know, a guinea pig or what you want to call it. You don't have to do that. I can tell you every product in the market. I can tell you how many customers they have. I can tell you what cores they're running on, right? We've got the information for bankers to look at and you come into bankers, helping bankers, we can show you everything, right? So I think the days of this being a dark black hole of what's out there, what could I utilize? What are others doing? We got all that information. That's there. That's a big first step. The big rub for a banker is, you know, somebody told me this, is it true? And then B, if I put this in there, what am I up against? Well, that's why you don't have to be the first guy. Yeah. Well, there's a lot yeah. of misinformation out there right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think that's, that's part of it. I mean, it, it's overwhelming, right? I mean, I just not, I don't see community banks. So yeah, I've got the, the, you know, 100 digital people waiting to look at, at solutions. No, take your time, get to know somebody, ask the right questions. But again, at the end of the day, do something, whether it's if you want to take it in, in pieces to what, where you're going to create your efficiencies. There's no better time to start. It, it's a process for you. Look for solutions, like I said, that can be deployed quickly, affordably. And if they're not great, you have the opportunity to walk away from them too. I mean, that, that should always have that out instead of saying uh, blocked in and I'm just stuck here for years and years and years paying a lot of money for something I can't use. So should we start another conference, the three of us, and it'll be called <laughs> Everybody's Ass or something, right? Winning, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll give you final thoughts, man. What do you, what did we not talk about that we should have? No, I think we covered a lot. I, I mean, you know, I, I just get back to listening to folks I met this week and talking to them and, and, and just, you know, there still seems to be a trepidation around, these solutions and, and how does it help the bank? And to me, think about the world a little bit globally. Money moves differently now. Your competitive landscape is a lot different today than it was. Oh, look at the pup in the back, cute. And to, the competitive landscape is so much different now. I, I always tell community bankers, it's not you're not necessarily competing against the community bank down the street anymore. You're competing against technology. And those are folks that are coming in in different pieces of your business that want to take it. And they're not friendly. They're not going to be like street shares and say, well, we want to help you. We're not trying to take your business. I think one of the things when bankers partnered with us on the old referral model is they knew we didn't offer other products that are going to try to take their customers. Right. <laughs> they said, you guys are just helping with the small business piece and I can't do that. So let me work with you. So from that end, I just, I think if you look at it, try to get out, find the right things, talk to, to folks like you guys and say, hey, what do you have out there in this space that would play well here that you know, you've know you heard is works? But whatever that solution is, again, whether it's in small business lending like we do, in your mortgages, in your student loans, I know there's companies out there that will package that stuff and help banks now. You need that revenue, you need those businesses. You have an amazing opportunity to take advantage of what happened last year in terms of deposits, new relationships. So, so please do that. You know, that, that's the one thing you're going to regret as a community bank. If you look back and say, well, we had, you know, 40, 50 percent attrition in those new customers because they didn't really become sticky to the bank. We didn't offer them much more than that. So if you can do that, take advantage, take full advantage of that now. It's going to be important. That's awesome. really great. Awesome. Yeah, there's a, a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of changes coming and there's a lot of advantages that you're sitting on that I think uh, are going to be interesting. And, and to your point, just. The, the, the businesses, they're going to have new opportunities to do things too. Maybe all of a sudden they're branched out to do something international. And so everybody think a little bit bigger here and what we're capable of doing. We now have the tools. Let's go get them. So yeah, just- absolutely. Hey, thanks, for thanks gentlemen. Me. Appreciate it. Have a great afternoon. We'll talk soon. Hope to see you guys soon. See you later.